All right, you should be rip roaring ready to go to learn all about Xcode. When you first come into Xcode, you're going to see a lot of windows and things are going to look a very confusing if this is your first time in. If not, you're already on your way, but we're going to talk about what some things do and where are things located essentially in this tutorial. Now, if you come into Xcode, you might see your project file, this little blue icon folded up like this. You can go ahead and break that open but it will be selected and this is the pane that you should see the window pane that you should see currently a summary tab and inside the summary tab you're gonna get things like supported interface orientations you know whether you, if you want to support you know rotation for portrait left landscape right landscape upside down pretty much common sense stuff here status bar app icons right this is will be where you put your app icon launch images that's the little default um, launch screen that comes up before your app runs um, other libraries and things as such. So, like, let's say you're working with MapKit or working with some um, other l framework that's built within uh, I iOS, or you know, it could be even external one for that matter. This is where you would add it in. Now, to prove to you that this is just a summary, if I go over to Build Phases, you'll notice the link binary with libraries is right here. So, again, this is just a summary of all these different settings. And you know, later on we'll go through each individual setting. I just want to make you aware of them now. If you look over to your left, if you've broken out this tree structure here, then you'll notice that you have a folder called Gangsta App. And inside Gangsta App, you have these two things called an app delegate. If you select on any of these files, you'll notice that the actual code view window pops up. Oops, code view window pops up and you could go in and start editing code. Well, we don't know nothing about this yet, so you know we're going to hold off on that in a minute. I just wanted to make it aware if you if you select you know the files, it will, will display accordingly. Now, what's an app delegate? That we're going to save for a whole another movie in itself. But you may be saying, well, what's then a view controller? The only thing you need to know right now is when I talk about headers and implementation files, right? So that's what these are. These dot H's these .h files right here are considered your header files these .ms are considered your implementation files get it m for implementation right there you go and then you're gonna have this thing that says xib we'll get to that in just one second but I also wanted to show you when you're actually coding if I was to select the imp implementation file or the header file it doesn't matter and I went up into this editor right here if I hit show the assistant editor will end up happening is I'll get a second window. Now I can come over here and hide the utilities drawer. Right? And now I could see both of these, the .m. You'll notice right here the .m file is what I'm working on. I can tell by the, the by the view selector right up here, I can tell that the .m is what I'm working on. If I wanted to change it to .h, I could. These are just like quick selector menus. So I could change it to whatever I want straight from you know, the menu I the menu right here or I come over here in the project pane and change it as well. And if I select the .m file, it's automatically, if I look, going to put the viewcontroller.h file in the other window. So for example, what's going to happen if I select appdelegate.m for implementation file? Right? I'm going to get the appdelegate.h in this window, and I'm going to get my appdelegate.m in this window. So they come in pairs. These things are essentially paired up if you haven't noticed the pattern already except this viewcontroller.xib. So this gets into a whole subject in itself and if I click in on the .xib file which is pronounced nib, right? It's an old term, nib file. We're going to see this thing right here and we'll be like, "Oh, well, this is kind of cool. We're starting to see something." Well, that's because we are. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and Add our utility drawer back, but we're going to also close close out the standard editor, right? That way we can just get rid of that extra code file. That's all I did. I went from the assistant editor back to the standard editor, and I opened up the utilities sliding drawer from the right. Now, why is this important? Well, when you go inside of here, essentially this nib file is essentially your your view it's your window view for your nib file so anything you see in here is going to be editable in interface builder so what is interface builder 
An interface builder is essentially a visual design assistant tool, whatever you want to call it, that's going to allow you to lay things out really, really easy in order to make your app. Now, you don't have to use Interface Builder, but it's pretty common nowadays and a lot of people use it. So I suggest using it. It makes your life much, much more easier. Now, I'll notice once I click on the nib file, right, I have it selected. This view came up. Now, wh let me just touch on views real quick. This is a view. So if you had multiple web pages and, and web development, like about contact or, you know, some link to something and it was a page, right, a web page. Views are like the exact same, they're, they're independent pages, if you will, but in this case, independent screens. So depending where you're at in the application, that's a different view. All right, enough about that. Now, you'll notice this little drawer came out here, and I have this thing called a files owner and a first responder. These both, too, will be for a later tutorial, but just another way to select the actual view here is to click it once or click it here and it'll even tell you it's the view you know you first responder file owner again the view and it's going to give you a whole bunch of attributes now in the next tutorial we're going to talk a lot more about attributes because we're going to start taking things and placing them on the actual view itself but for this tutorial we'll just quickly go over some attributes it, depending on what I had this is the key depending on what I have selected the attributes are going to change now Right, I have the actual view selected right now, so I could, it's going to give me all the attributes for that view. It's going to let me choose between screen sizes I want to de develop or design for. It's going to let me change between portrait to landscape, landscape to portrait. Right, I can go back and forth depending on what type of app I'm laying out. Top bar, I can add a navigation bar in if I wanted to. You know, lots of different options here. That little status bar, if you didn't want that as part of your design because it takes up a little extra room, boom, gone. And there's how you do it. So if we just go back to default, if I wanted to change the background, remember when we launched our, our app inside of the iOS simulator, right? We had just that gray app and it didn't look like we really had anything. Well, if I actually changed it, I could change it to a red background, a green background, you know, and we're just going to leave it on gray, but you can change the background color as well. So you have tons of control inside of the attributes inspector. All right. Well, enough about the attribute uh, inspector for a minute, but we'll, we'll cover more on that in the next tutorial when we start talking about the library and things as such. To finish out the projects pane window over here, we also have things like supporting files. And you can go in here and click on each one and see what they do, right? You just get XML lists of essentially, you know, this is your plist right here. You essentially get an XML display of that if you click on it. Um, oops, didn't mean to double click. Now, frameworks, this is just similar to what you saw before. If I imported a framework, I would just want to keep it organized by dragging it, because it usually comes in at the root level. I would just drag it into this folder right here, keep my frameworks organized. Any kind of other supporting files would be things like images, um, reference images, things as such that you want to keep you know, organized, well organized. And then you have this thing product. This is essentially is the output. Um, you don't need to mess with that at all. So I hope this tutorial has been helpful and in the next tutorial we're going to learn further and discuss, you know, things dealing with the library and other panels, uh, you know, more panels, more panels, more panels. It's really important you get to know the different panels and understand them well and where to go to look for things when you need them. So see you in the next tutorial.